Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and the Google 2019 GDC keynote just ended. Now I wasn't entirely sure what to expect coming in, sort of expected some kind of a streaming announcement or possibly a console announcement, and what I got was actually a bit of both. So just like the Unity keynote yesterday, I'm going to condense the entire uh, Google GDC concession down as small as possible, probably around the 10 to 15 minute mark again. But this one is going to be a little bit different because quite frankly, this session was all about one thing, and that was Stadia. So what exactly is Stadia? Well, we'll get to that as we go through, but essentially it is streaming plus um, a console kind of combined together. It is essentially a Project Stream, that thing that they showed last year where they showed um, Assassin's Creed running at 1080p in the Chrome browser. Well, they've taken that one step further. What they're essentially trying to do is make their cloud servers the hardware behind your gaming technology. So yes, this is all streaming based. And the hilarious thing about that is there were about three or four network glitches during this presentation that I couldn't help laugh my ass off every time they occurred. So where do I feel on this one when it was over kind of optimistic to be honest even though I don't have any faith in streaming for the most part so what happened in this trailer? Well, first off, uh, Sundar Pichar came out. He was the first speaker. It was mostly just corporate speak, so we're going to skip over that until Phil Harrison came out and made an announcement. Now, Phil Harrison is a name you should probably remember, as he used to be an executive on the Xbox team and before that on the PlayStation team. So this is a guy with a lot of experience in gaming, and he is leading up their uh, gaming platform here. He's basically in charge of Stadia. Um, so now what you can do... Um, is play now on ads, trailers, or websites. So you can actually put a link in and immediately have your game jump up in a browser. Uh, there's no console requirements. It works across multiple different screens. So then what they do is they go ahead and show a demonstration of this. And this was running first on a Pixel book, which was kind of cool. And then they um, thoughtlessly transformed over to a Pixel 3 phone. And then from there, they went to a desktop PC, and then over to a Chrome OS Pixel Slate tablet using the same controller as they went. And this is the new piece of hardware on this. They've created their own Chrome controller, the Stadia, sorry, Google controller, the, the Stadia controller. It uses Wi-Fi and actually connects directly to their server. So it's not running through your game and then up. It's actually connecting to their servers uh, directly to the game sessions on their end. So the standard controller functions um, that you would expect from normal controllers. Plus, you can also use your own uh, PlayStation 4 or Xbox style controller. They didn't explicitly say which ones, but I got to assume those two are supported. But this one actually has two new buttons on it. One is a capture button for sharing directly to to YouTube, and one is the Google Assistant button. It uses the built-in microphone of the controller. We're going to get to the specifics of how that works in a few minutes. Um, then they got into uh, how the data centers work. So it's a built on top of the same data network that Google itself uses for Google search. They say there are 7,500 end nodes. That is basically pieces of hardware connecting their uh, data network. So in between all these fiber optic lines, they have servers, uh, the 7,500 little server centers for you to directly connect to. And this is what they're saying. They can keep their latency down as a result of. They say Stadia will launch at 4K at 60 frames per second with HDR and surround sound with the capability of expanding out to 8K at 120 frames per hour streaming in the future. Now, the funny thing is I have tried stream, streaming games at 1080p and I have gigabyte internet and it's never worked. So it's going to be interesting to see how this all actually works at the end. Uh, their kind of key frame on this was the data center is your platform. So they partnered with AMD to build custom GPUs. Each GPU has 10 teraflops of computing power, 56 compute instances. They say that it is two times power, more powerful than a PS4, and then about 40% more powerful than the Xbox um, One. So they're kind of saying that it is actually more powerful than both the modern compiler, both the modern platforms combined, which I wait and see. But uh, technology wise, it is built on top of Linux and the Vulkan game engine. They announced partnerships with the Unreal Engine and Unity game engines, um, and then middleware providers, a whole bunch of them, including Havoc, Fmod, uh, Rad Tools. Um, Simply Gone, etc., which is kind of funny because Simply Gone and FMOD 
uh, sorry, Simply Gone and Havoc are both Microsoft-owned products right now. And I don't know why Microsoft would get in on this because they're trying to push the same thing with their own Azure products and, of course, with uh, the whole Xbox, the next streaming one, as things are rumored anyways. So it looks like both Google and Microsoft are going in the same uh, direction here, but two Microsoft-owned companies are actually supporting um, this platform, which I find a little interesting anyways. Uh, next up, they had Marty Stratton from ID come on. He talked about Doom Eternal. Um, funny enough, the graphics glitch out here as well, which again is not inspiring a whole lot of faith with the future of streaming, but they said that Doom Eternal will be launching uh, at 4K and 60 frames per second at launch. Uh, full game running on Stadia will be shown at the ID developer session later in the day. No gameplay footage was shown. And actually, this is a bit of a trend. They bring out developers over and over again, and they keep saying things like, we're working on a title, but we can't tell you about it now, which is kind of anticlimactic for a demo. Um, they say that Doom runs on a single Stadia GPU, and this is where the Stadia is supposed to shine, is they've got multi-GPU support, so you can have uh, developers can spin up and do more and more with their GPUs. They brought out a custom version of 3D Bench where they showed uh, fluid dynamics that are capable with a side-by-side -side instance running with a single GPU, or multiple instances running from multiple Stadia GPU instances. Now. Through this entire presentation, by the way, there was no mention of pricing or if the developer are paying for all these GPU instances, how any of this is monetized, that nothing, okay? So just, if that question is in your head right now, it's, leave it there. It's not answered as part of this presentation. Uh, next up, they talked about how Google networking is safer and more predictable because both the client and server stay entirely on Google's network. Basically, just the streamed results go out to the endpoint. And this actually is probably one of the biggest upsides I see with Stadia. And it does make a lot of sense because if you have all of the networking happening on their supercomputers on the back end, you can scale up and have thousands of players connected in like a PUBG kind of scenario. And as long as their servers can scale up to handle it, it doesn't really matter to your end. And there is where this is pretty powerful stuff. Now, of course, they get into another area there where you've got all of these people in different disparate areas, and you're going to have slowdown if you're playing with people in Hong Kong, and your data point is in um, London, England, and then another one in Arkansas. You're going to have slowdown there, so I don't know if it's going to be region locking people. Those specifics weren't announced, but one of the big plus sides to this whole scenario is that it will basically eliminate eliminate most forms of cheating and hacking because everything is actually run on the server side. It's sort of like how MMOs were a lot harder to hack because uh, you know there's nothing on the client that you can really cheat. The client's pretty dumb in this particular case. It's more or less a stream and some interactive feedback going back and forth and that's about it. Um, then the cool thing they got into is cr uh, cross-platform play. Developers can decide um, who can play against who. You can have saves that go between all the various different devices since everything is virtualized. Now, this is developer-driven. So, for example, if you don't want mobile players being slaughtered by desktop players, it sounds like the developer can choose not to enable cross-play. But otherwise, cross-play is fully supported. They are going to be platform agnostic with their approach. Uh, and then they announced Stream Connect. This is actually pretty sweet. This is actually maybe the thing that impressed me the most is this is all about couch co-op. And what they're doing is they're allowing you to basically, um, so let's say you're running a game on your machine. Every time you do a viewport in it, so you split the screen once, you've kind of doubled the processing requirements. Now you have the resolution because the TV only has to display half as much, but the processing power goes up misproportionately. So when you add four players, it gets harder and harder and harder for the game to handle. So the fidelity has to be drawn down and so on. What Stream Connect essentially allows them to do is create a new Stadia instance for every um, area. And then they're basically just what they're streaming to you is um, the, the rendered result. So they could have 64 different um, windowed multiplayer co-op you know, streams going on, and it's not going to affect your client in the slightest. Now, once again, they never mention how any of this is actually getting paid for. So does each person at the house have to have an account? Who knows? But it is cool tech because it allows you to split things up. They also even showed it like a command center view where the, the one person can actually coordinate the whole process and have a different gameplay mode. Um, and then they got into Google Cloud. Uh, it was demoed by um, Luis Sancho from Tequila Works. And then they, sh they showed Style Transfer ML, which is machine learning that is being applied on the fly to the rendered frame of the graphics. And what you can do is you can send in, kind of they started with a grayscale artwork, and you send in uh, inspiration for the machine learning. They use Starry Nights as an example, and it automatically generates a new art style on the fly. So this is the kind of like, okay, something that coders have had to deal with for ages is that 
you know, computers are going to replace us. Well, artists just got their first feeling of what that might be like too. Now, again, this is going to get very samey though, uh, but it is interesting to show how um, potentially um, machine learning can be applied to art creation, especially in real time like this. Uh, next up, they showed state share. Uh, this is kind of neat. Basically, you can snapshot um, game details in real time and send it as a hyperlink. So for example, you could say, I am at this point in this game, I have this many hit points left, I have this inventory, jump in and try it out yourself. And you send that hyperlink to somebody else and they can click that link, jump into Stadia, and they're at that exact point in time. So it's kind of like dynamic bookmarkings and you can also build it into your game. Now, once again, they brought someone out to demonstrate this, Dylan Cuthbert from Q Games. And then he said, yeah, we got something in the works, but I can't share it to you. <laughs> so it's like, I, why do you bring these people out? I don't know what they were adding to the experience uh, but they did it again and again like they did with the ID guy where they bring people out to demonstrate stuff and then they have nothing to demonstrate which seemed like a strange choice um, but this actually kind of reminds me of back in the 8-bit when you had passport passwords that you know, stored that jumped you back into the given game at a certain point in time because you know there wasn't save state on the carts it kind of feels like that but in the hyperlink era it's kind of a cool feature though um, Let's say a highlight live stream and capture directly from Stadia to YouTube for YouTube creators. This one's kind of neat, actually. So um, you have a direct 4K stream that goes over to YouTube um, as an option, and it shouldn't really slow anything down because it never comes to you. So right now with traditional streaming, if you stream something, it is streaming down to your machine. You save it, then you upload it to YouTube. In this case, it's actually taking your gameplay and sending it with its own connection straight over to YouTube up to 4K gaming there. Um, crowd play, click a button and jump in with a YouTube creator. So they're kind of making the whole, uh, if you host games on YouTube as a creator, you can actually open up a lobby and have people come in and join your instance. And they use the example of NBA. Uh, so you could have players, you know, kind of in a waiting lobby to join you while you are streaming live. Now for streamers, that's going to be a huge new thing. Uh, it might also be the most abused feature in the history of gaming. Be interesting to see how that one turns out. Uh, then they brought the guy from uh, Game Theories over and and he basically just repeated everything that was just said about it. And that was kind of, okay, I don't know why that was added either, but it was sort of the trend of this whole video. Um, next up, they talked about Google Assistant integration into Stadia. Now, remember back earlier in the video, I mentioned they had the Google Assistant button there. Well, you can now click that and ask for kind of AI driven help. Like, how do I get over this next level? And I gotta, you gotta know, someone is gonna monetize this. This is gonna be like the future of the 900 hint book you used to have back in the 80s and 90s when you used to get to a dead end in a game. Uh, but essentially, that's what it is. It's an interactive 900 number that is built into your game. Now, they didn't talk about monetizing it, but come on, you and I both know that's gonna happen. But it's real time on the fly Google Assistant integration. And to be honest, uh, I love Google Assistant on my phone. I think I will love it in game as well. Um, so that is definitely an exciting thing to happen. And then they kind of talked about how the entire internet can become your store. Now they were maddeningly vague about here. Now once again, they never touched on monetization or the store or who pays for all this or how instances work. It's great, they've built this Uber data center full of high-end custom designed AMD GPUs, but they never talked about how this is actually being paid for. Is it the end user is going to be paid for? Do you pay on a tier? Like that's going to be the make or break detail on all of it. And none of those information were there, but you are going to be able to throw a link anywhere and say, jump into my Stadia game. So you can advertise your game on Twitter and people will be playing it five seconds later. You can have it on your own webpage. And then they also mentioned their own Stadia store, which is going to surprise nobody that that's coming. Um, and then they, they talked about how Jade Raymond is now in charge of their new in-house studio. And then Jade Raymond came out on stage and keeping with trends, said absolutely nothing new or interesting or exciting. So I'm mostly skipping over that part. And then we get to the end of it where we talk about the details and the details are vague. So what we know right now is if you want to apply to get access to tools, you go to stadia.dev. Um, if you want more in information as a gamer, you go to stadia.com and that the Stadia platform is launching in in 2019 and that's it that's all we know at this point in time now how do I view this one I don't know actually I, again I don't think streaming works but if there's a streaming infrastructure that works it will be Google's and the fact that uh, the uh, the server and the client are all one thing essentially they're all on their servers uh, it does solve a lot of the latency and multiplayer issues of online gaming because everybody is on the same playing field for the most part 
But again, I have a gigabyte internet connection and even this video didn't make it through without glitching out. I don't trust it for gaming. So I don't honestly think this is the future, but I do see a lot of upside. The ability to instantly play a game five seconds after you click, that's pretty awesome. Now let's see if the infrastructure actually supports it. All right, so that is it. So basically that was the Google Keynote, but we could just call that the Stadia Keynote because that was really the big takeaway here. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.